So one of our viewers had a question of how much would it cost to run an 18,000 BTU mini split heat pump um, off of solar. And it uh, if you already bought the unit, you don't have to worry about that cost. But if you're looking at how much it's going to cost per components, first of all, if you're going to run that right now, we are running that with no solar coming in. You can see um, we have no solar coming in. And our load is right around 621 watts. We've settled in to um, the room temperature is set at 77. And we're actually saying it's 75 degrees. So we're only using 11 amps right now. But uh, and 624 watts. So once you're down there, that's where you're going to settle in. Right around 600 watts, 11 to 12 amps. Now, if we put this thing on high during the day, and that would be set at 61 degrees, this is going to um, start moving up those watts. So you got that'll probably go up to about 1700. Um, 1700 watts right here that we'll be using and it'll be probably around 32 to 36 DC amps you can already see that's doubled already and we're at 1.1 kilowatts 1100 watts and we're already at double of what the 11 amps we were showing earlier so you're going to need some type of an inverter that's either split phase or 220 volt. So plan on spending 750 to 1500 dollars on an inverter um, if you want to get some type of inverter like this or something like this. Um, like I said, you're either going to need split phase where you can do 120, 220, um, or something that just is 220 if that's all you want to run is yet 220 volt. Um, mini split heat pump then you're gonna have to put uh, fuses in or breakers you're gonna have to have bus bars and you're gonna have to have a battery now you can get this is a lithium iron phosphate battery that's 51.2 volts um, 100 amp hour and it's 5120 watt storage capacity now these are around uh, 1500 to 2000 dollars delivered and I'll put a link where you can get those. Uh, you can get one of these nicer ones. These are EGL, um, EG4LL version 2. Those are version 1. These are going to be about $2,000 delivered for each one of these batteries. And then you have AGM batteries. The difference between these AGM batteries and this is this is a 12 volt. This is 51.2 volts set up for a 48 volt system and those are all 48 volt systems so these are about 250 bucks a piece they're 12 volts and think of this as having four of those and this is lithium iron phosphates so you'd need like four of these batteries of these agms inside that one size battery look at the footprint of that of how big those batteries are and then look at this on how small that is so this you might be able to run this overnight run that 18,000 BTU you might be able to get through the night depending on the temperatures and um, what you are how low you're trying to run this so we're already up to almost 1.7 kilowatts of power using out of this mini split there we go 1.7 and we're using 32 33 amps right now so in order to do that like i said you're going to need the 220 volt mini split you're going to need some type of inverter uh, this is actually single phase this only does 120 but you can get these that do 120 240 220 whatever um 
And then you're going to need a battery bank to be able to run it. And whether it's AGM, lithium iron phosphate. And then you're going to need the wires. You're going to need the wires that run from the bus bar here to your batteries. And if you take a look, the panels, you're going to need like 2,500 to 3,000 watts in panels to be able to run that consistently and keep your batteries charged. So there's the puppies there. And I have, um, I bought all my panels used. I got them for like 25 to $38, but right now they're probably around $50 used if you can find them. I live in Arizona and I go over into Gilbert, Arizona to buy these. And sometimes you can get them as low as 40 bucks a piece. But these are 250 watt panels. These are 39 inches by 65 inches. You would need 10 to 12 of these to be 2,500 watts to 3,000 watts. So this is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. So you would need all these solar panels. And like I said, this is 130 inches for two of these. So that's like 10 feet. So you're talking 20, 22 feet. And then you're going um, 120 inches that way by 10 feet. So you're talking like 22 by 10 feet of space you're going to need to have a solar array. And you're going to need 12 of those panels. And say those are 50 bucks a piece. That's going to be some $600. Yeah, $600 for those panels. And then you're going to have to run the wire. The wire's up underneath there all the way over to where you're going to need. Now, these are these are 250-watt panels too, but these are mono on here. And these are smaller. These are only like uh, 31 and a half inches. Those are 39 inches wide. These are 31 and a half. And these are 60, I want to say 63 inches long, and those are 65. You can get them in panels, solar panels in all different shapes, sizes, watts, amps. And these are 330 watts. Now these will put out close to 10 amps, as where these put out around seven and a half to eight amps. And these put out around seven, seven and a half amps each. So um if you want to consistently be able to run your mini split at 220 volts uh depending on the temperature you're going to set i would say you'd need at least 10 to 12 of those 250 watt panels now you can get different size you can get 200 watt panels you can get 150 watt you can get 400 watts but you're going to need like probably 2500 to 3000 watts in panels if you want to be able to run it on cloudy days rainy days and be able to um, get through the day. And like I said, if you um, want to run that overnight, you wouldn't be able to do that on a AGM battery. You would need to be able to use lithium iron phosphate batteries, which are, like I said, these are server rack batteries. You can get, you can get lithium iron phosphate batteries like this too. Um, in 12 volt, but I find if you want to do something and run it consistently, this is going to be your best option. But you know, these version ones, you're looking at fifteen, sixteen hundred dollars to get one of these delivered, around two thousand dollars to get one of those delivered, and you might be able to get away with one trying to run this thing overnight, especially if you were to, um, super cool your house so we're at 1.75 kilowatts as it gets hotter out you're going to use more amps so we're using 33 amps right here and on there and that's dc amps so right here we're discharging at 18.2 amps and that's on this battery and that battery so you're close to 37 amps that you're discharging out of your battery at almost 1800 watts so 
like I said earlier, we had this running and we were down around 600 watts. Uh, you might be able to get it down to 500 watts once the room is at temp. Um, I'm not sure if it's going to drop that much more than that. And you're going to be using around 10 or 11 amps once it reaches temperature and keeps there. So going into the night, you're not going to use as much power as you do during the day because every hour that goes by after the sunset, your house cools down more and it's going to require less cooling. So, you know, if you don't have one of these yet, you're looking at probably a thousand to fifteen hundred dollars for a 220 volt, 18,000 BTU mini split. Um, and that's that's like 21 sears. So, if you want to go higher, sear, it can go up to 20 to 2,000, 2,500 dollars. Uh, you get up into the 30 sear range. So, expect to pay about 750 to 1500 dollars for an inverter, whether it be like that that's um 220 or split phase where it's 120 220 uh this is split phase these are like 1200 bucks for one of these and your battery is going to be about 1600 to 2000 dollars i uh, if it's a 48 volt system you would need four of these batteries in series to give you the 12 volt would be 48 volts now, these AGMs will run you during the day, but you're not going to get through at night at all. You might run for an hour, maybe two hours at 600 watts, and then you'll kill these batteries, and they'll be dead for the rest of the night. You have to wait until the sun comes up and charges them the next day. You don't want to run these below 12 volts. So when they're fully charged, at the end of the day, they're like 13.2 volts for me, and then I never ran them at night. So these are still fully charged 100% state of charge batteries I have. Um, looking to get rid of those. So if anybody's interested in those EGMs, now that I have lithium iron phosphate, I don't need those. But those started up my three and a half ton and four ton with um, just one set of those four batteries. And then I was running with two sets on there. So eight batteries, four were in series, four were in series, and then those were in parallel. So, they're great for starting up your main air conditioners. I have a three and a half ton and a four ton. And I was even starting up my 127,000 BTU, which is a 12.7 ton pool heater heat pump using these AGM batteries. So, these are really good, but only during the day. You can't run things at night off of them. So, anyways... That's pretty much the price you're going to pay. You're going to, like I said, you're going to need to buy breakers, bus bar, wire from your bus bar to your batteries, wires from your solar panels into your inverters. And um, you're talking probably about four to $5,000 to be able to connect that mini split. But I think you put down, you live in a mobile home park. So you want to, want to make sure the mobile home park allows you to install off-grid solar. This is off-grid. I don't have anything that's on-grid. Um, I have friends of mine that live in mobile home parks and they won't let them install off-grid or on-grid solar on top of their um, mobile home. I don't even know if they'll allow them to build an array and put it in the yard. So probably having to do with insurance. You'd have to check with your insurance company to see if you could do either off-grid or on-grid solar. And also with the park you're in, if you're renting in a park. If you're out on your own land, you don't need to worry about it. If you do it off-grid, I don't think you need to pull permits. So, you'd be good on that. Anyways, I hope that answers your questions um, about what you would need. And um, you hopefully will be able to get a better idea of whether it's worth it to run that or not. I'm all electric at my house. What I invested in mine, I've already paid off. When I buy one year, a year later, it's already paid itself off. And then I buy more stuff, and then it's paid itself off. So everything you see here at the end of this year will be completely paid off. And this will be my fourth year. And I'm basically my electric bill on grid with the wife using everything she wants, except for air conditioning, pool pump, and pool heater. 
everything else she's running off a of grid, our bill's less than, it's like 60 to $90 a month, even in the middle of summer when it's 115 degrees out. So hope that helps. Uh, if you have any questions, please don't hesitate to ask. And please like, share, subscribe. Smash that notification bell for new videos. We'll see you on the next video and hope you have a truly wonderful and extremely blessed day.